Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Most High Christ bless y'all. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Aon. I'm also a liar. All right. And today's topic, we're going to jump right into it. All right. And it's one that I've heard numerous of times on the streets and calls on the phone as well. But uh, the topic is, so you can't have sex on the Sabbath. That's the question. We get that a lot. I don't know why. This is something that has been implanted out there to our people that's coming to this knowledge that you can't have sex on the Sabbath, all right? And it's based off this precept we go go to about your pleasure. Let's go to Isaiah 58 and 13 because your pleasures can be anything. And we go show that in the scriptures, via the scriptures, all right? When it's talking about your pleasures, it's talking about anything outside of the commandments on the Lord's day, okay? Go, let's read that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, and verse 13. Mm -hmm. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath. All right. The key, the Sabbath. All right, go ahead. From doing thy pleasure on my holy day, mm -hmm. and call the Sabbath a delight, mm -hmm. the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways. Key, you got to listen to the key words it's saying, not doing thine own ways. That means for the Sabbath, you're applying the commandments. You're not breaking the laws. We're going to show you having sex is not breaking the laws. Okay, go ahead. Nor finding thine own pleasure, mm -hmm. nor speaking thine own words. Key words, nor finding thine own pleasure. <clears throat> key, that's the key word they point out, your own pleasures. Yes, yeah, sex is pleasurable, right? But it's lawful to do on the Sabbath. That's a precept that you have to show me where we cannot do that. And basically, I'm going to show, this, show you these things today to give you the breakdown of when you cannot have sex. All right? And the Sabbath is not one of those times. Okay? So from there, let's go ahead and get, let's get Mark 7 and 7 right here. Because all these come from who? From man. These doctrines. Okay? Man has created all these new doctrines according to our history that do not mate with the Bible. All right. Mark 7 and verse 7. This is the book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 7. Uh -huh. How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Teaching for doctrines, laws, the commandments of man. Man made that a law that you cannot have sex on, that you cannot have sex on the Sabbath. This is something that's new. All right. But we're going to show you when this was an effect of not having sex. Okay? So, let's just jump into it. Three different times that the Bible reference that you can't have sex. Let's go to Leviticus 15 and 19. Leviticus 15 and 19. So, we're going to show you, thus said the Lord, in the scriptures, when you can and cannot have sex. All right? You got that? This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 15 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. And if well, Start a, at 16. Read 16. First. Verse 16. And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even. So it's, it's talking about sex. All right? Sex. 
Seed of compilation, seed, sperm of a man, compilation sex, him and the woman, right? Go out from him, he must wash himself. Now, this whole chapter going into what we're going to read, a woman being on what? Her menstrual, all right? A man can't go into his wife on her menstrual. That's one time that you cannot have sex with your wife. Jump to 19. Verse 19, and if a woman have an issue and her flesh and her issue in her flesh, be blood. That is going into what? Her period. All right. Go ahead. She shall be put apart seven days, mm -hmm. and whosoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. So whatever she touched, all right, be via you, <laughs> via the house, the, the, the steps, the pole up the uh, steps up the stairs, or whatever she touched was unclean. That's why they were set apart. All right. They had a place where they went. They weren't around. They men, they husband, all right? But it's going into what? Her menstrual, her period, all right? Keep reading. Well, no, no, jump to, uh, so seven days, you cannot have sex with your wife, all right? Because she's unclean to you, all right? And we're going to get the whole premise of what it's going into as well. But read 25. Verse 25. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation. So you see that it said have an issue of blood many days out of the time of her separation. You see the separation? She's separated from her husband and from everything else, meaning the temple. That's what it's going into. All right. So if her, her issue of blood, her menstrual period, go outside of the seven days. She has to do it or what? Another seven days or however long it takes until she's clean. All right. So jump to 31. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Thus shall ye separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. So thus shall ye separate the children of Israel. The woman that's in the midst of her menstrual have to be separated from what? The temple. She would be unclean to go into the temple. Go ahead. That they die not in their uncleanness mm -hmm. when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. The tabernacle that is among them. For them to go in the temple, they will be defiling the temple. All right. So key things to remember, Israel. The woman on her menstrual today, that's not in effect. Why? Because the temple is not here. It's not existence anymore. All right. Our land don't belong to us. All right. The heathen have possession of that. All right. So. Today, you still don't have sex with your wife, all right, but she still can come to the congregation, all right? So, uh, because, you know, yeah. So, from there, let's get the second type of, second time in which you cannot have sex with your wife, all right? Let's go to First Corinthians 7 and, and 3, 7 and 3. This is the, the next time in which you cannot have sex with your wife, all right? So the first one was what? If she's on a menstrual, all right, her issue of blood, then you can't have sex with her, all right? Now we're going to get the second time in which you cannot have sex with your wife. Go ahead. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. So due benevolence is going into sex, all right? charity, love. This is between a man and a woman. Sex. All right. Read. It's going to further explain what it's talking about. All right. Do benevolence. Go ahead. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. The wife hath not power over her own body, meaning to withhold her body from who? Her husband. Go ahead. And likewise, also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Likewise, the husband had no power over his own body as well. It belongs to who? His wife. As well, her body belongs to who? Her husband. All the, I'm sick, uh, my stomach hurt, uh, uh, my head hurt, all these different excuses right. that women have, mainly women. Um, that don't work. The most I say, no, your body is his. When he wants what's his, you need to give it to him. You understand? So, you know, this is a better understanding, sisters and brothers, you know, but mainly be the sisters, okay? Want to withhold. Uh, keep reading. Defraud ye not one the other, 
except it be with consent for a time. So defraud ye not one another, all right? Don't be making excuses to say why you cannot do X, Y, Z and have sex, right? It's going to tell you the time you can do that, all right? Meaning you have a reasoning behind why you're not having sex. Go ahead. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer Mm -hmm. and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Mm -hmm. Read that uh, top part again, that ye. Yes, sir. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. So that you may give yourself. So this is it's explaining to you the time in which you do not have sex. When you're doing what? Giving yourself to fasting and praying. When you read another scripture that's telling you in uh, Peter's, what's that, 3 and 7 on down that you're going to be on one accord with your wife. Yes, sir. We agree together for this time of fasting and praying, we're not going to have sex. Because you don't eat anything, um, nothing goes in your mouth. You, you basically discipline yourself. Sex is another form of that discipline. You don't have sex when you're fasting. Okay, that's what it's telling you right here. All right, it says, and come together again. So after you fasted, right, from evening to evening, nightfall to nightfall, then you can come together again and have sex. Right, right. We don't want to court with that. All right, go ahead with uh, that Satan. That Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. That Satan tempt you not because, of course, um, the woman want to withhold, so on and so forth. And then the man can start to go to those other devices in which the world has presented to us. Okay. And that's Satan tempting the man or the woman, vice versa, because they're withholding something, which is sex, from their their partner, their flesh. All right. So this is the second time in which you cannot have sex. All right. Did not mention anything about not having sex on the Sabbath? No, not at all. Let's go ahead and get the third one. Let's go to Leviticus 12 and verse one. This is the third time in which the Bible speaks of and refers to not having sex. All right. And it's going into what? When a woman have children. Let's read that. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 12 and verse one. Uh And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days. So this is going back as well into what? The uncleanness of the menstrual as well per se. But it's going into when a woman having a child, a man-child or a, a, a girl-child? A maid-child, thank you. I want to butcher it. A maid-child. A man child or a maid child, all right? And it's going to give you the uh, prerequisites, the time limit in which for a boy and a girl that you cannot go in until your wife, meaning have sex, all right? And Esau know about this as well, all right? Keep going. Then she shall be unclean seven days. So first off, it's going into the man child, the boy. Go ahead. According to the days of the separation for her infirmity, shall she be unclean. Okay, so first it mentioned seven days, right? Seven, seven days, she shall be unclean. All right, let's go. We adding it up as well. Go ahead. And in the eighth day, Mm -hmm. the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. The flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised, the young male boy. Why? Because this is a covenant from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, that was passed down from our forefather Abraham. Right, the covenant that he made with the Most High in Genesis seventeen twenty three, we did it. We passed that down from generation to generation. Christ did it. All right, so this is which we fulfill that covenant. All right, keep going. And she shall then continue in the blood of her purifying three and thirty days. She shall then continue in her purifying, meaning not having sex, healing from her wounds. Right. How, how many say it? 30 days, yes, right? Yes, sir. Three and 30, 30. Three and 30. That's 33 days, okay? Plus seven days is what? 40 days, all right? So in 40 days, you cannot go in unto your wife, brothers, all right? Sisters, all right? We're not playing with Esau stuff, all right? Because they, they have different day times, yada, yada. Right. We're going to stick with what the scriptures say, all right? Let's keep going. She shall touch no hallowed thing, Mm -hmm. nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying be fulfilled. So that's going back into the temple, which we read in 15, Leviticus 15 again. Right. All right. She couldn't go in the temple at this time. She was 
put to a different place. She was separated from her husband. They had a place for them to go. All right. Uh, keep going. But if she bear a maid child. So if she bear a maid child, a baby girl. Go ahead. Then she shall be unclean two weeks. So you got two weeks in which she shall be unclean, which is 14 days. Go ahead. As in her separation. Again, that's that key word, in her separation. She separated from the man. All right, go ahead. And she shall continue in the blood of her purifying three score and six days. Three score and six days. That's 66 days. Plus 14 days is how much? 80 days. That she will be separated or, and cannot have sex with her husband. All right? So these are the laws concerning sex. All right? And not the, the time that you cannot have sex. All right? And it's not on the Sabbath. These are specific times when a woman gives birth, when a woman is on her menstrual, and when you and your wife are fasting and praying on one accord together, you cannot have sex. Those are the only times the scriptures speak of these things, all right? So with that, Israel, I pray that you got some understanding from the class. Uh, continue to like, share, comment, and uh, rate our videos. Um, and remember, remember to con uh, continue to check out the 15 Men with the Captain page. Lord willing, next time I see you soon. Most high in Christ bless. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.